Welcome to the Trading Bell. I'm Noah Kipkimboy, and today we're having a conversation with Standard Chartered Bank Kenya. How have they weathered the pandemic? Because the bank, what have they learned? I will have a sit down with the CEO of Standard Kenya, Karu Kingari. Before we do that, let's take a look at his profile, shall we? Karyuki is an accomplished career banker with over 23 years of retail banking experience. He earned his recognition through successfully transforming the consumer banking divisions of Standard Chartered Bank Kenya and Standard Chartered Regional Africa. A seasonal financial professional, he has held various senior leadership roles across the industry. Prior to his current role, he was the Global Head Retail Distribution for Standard Chartered Bank in Singapore. There, he was instrumental in formulating global strategies in building the future of retail branch and voice and virtual landscapes through digitization of the physical channels and revision of branch models and standards. Prior to his global role, Karyuki was the regional head of Retail Clients Africa between 2013 and 2015 and the executive director Kenya and East Africa from 2009 to 2013. He has also held senior positions in Barclays Bank of Kenya Limited. Today we are having a sit down with the Standard Chartered Bank Kenya. This is the first bank in the country. Okay, so they've been here for over 100 years. 2019, we understand banks' expectations for the year 2020 were high. The question is, with the disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic, what is the recovery strategy? What have the banks discovered from this season of pandemic that will hopefully reshape the banking sector uh, moving forward, 2021 moving forward? Well, right now I'm joined by Mr. Karu Kingari, who is the CEO of Stanchet Kenya. Welcome to the Trading Bell, sir. Thank you. So for you as a bank, uh, 2019 and the previous years, uh, performance growth. Now, coming into 2020, what were your expectations for the year? 2020, we started with a lot of hope and confidence. If you remember January, February, we were looking forward to a good year. Uh, but March, if you remember March, to the third week of March, as, as I say, the, literally the entire world shut down. Uh, we shut down very, very quickly as a country, and then the entire world shut down. So it was, it was really a time of... Uh, unknown unknown we didn't know what was going to happen uh, we didn't anticipate what would happen and so that is why one of the first actions we did at that point because we had already announced our results we had already recommended a dividend was actually to bury our dividend was actually to go back and something we've never done in our history in our history as you mentioned of 100 years we never declared a dividend and then months later you are telling the shareholders hey there's something here we need to bury this dividend mm -hmm. That's, so the, it showed the uncertainty at that particular point in time. Mm. It was a very uncertain time, uh, and we had to take the actions that we took. But I think when I look back, when I look back at some of the, our strategic priorities really helped us through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The first one, especially on technology, we committed that we're going to continue disrupting and transforming digital. That worked very well, mm -hmm. because immediately the country was completely locked down. Our clients could continue to transact mm -hmm. digitally. And second and most important, our staff, we could, they could continue serving them from home. We, we reached a peak of 70%. We are still there. 70% of our staff are still working from home. Mm -hmm. Because technology, we, we, we invested in the technology. We made sure that the security is there. They can be able to access and uh, or they can be able to continue serving our clients. So okay. that worked well for us. All right. Yes. And uh, in terms of these changes, 70% of the workforce working from home, uh, investment in the digital you know, uh, platforms for, for the people, your clientele. Uh, what, how did that impact uh, the cost of doing business for you as a bank? I think we are seeing the, the cost of business, uh, we, we'll, we expect it to continue to drop. I think, uh, especially when you look at uh, the investment that you've done in technology. If, if you get a lot more people doing things physically, let's take like, if I take two examples, if the branch network, if you've got a huge number of clients coming to the branches to do their, their transactions, you'll end up investing a lot more in the physical branches and physical network, and that comes with a cost. But when you invest in technology, 
you start seeing clients no longer need to come to a branch. And we've seen a 46% drop in footfall across our branch network. In some branches, as much as 90% drop in footfall. So of course, that means that that cost, we don't need to continue having that cost. So that, so that helps. And then secondly, in terms of the client transactions, if they're not, if they are able to do a lot of their transactions digitally, and this is both for retail clients and corporate clients, they can be able to send you documentation all digitally, then you'd expect the cost to drop. And if you look at our cost last year, it only marginally went up by 1%. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you really strip, uh, the strip out the investment that we, we, we did in terms of the technology cost, if you t strip out the cost that we did where some jobs fell off and we had to pay off some colleagues, actually we had a very good year in terms of cost management. It, was, it could be underlying cost, cost growth was less than 10%. Definitely. Yeah. And, and that brings the question that has been there. I think we are on a transition as the world. So people are wondering, in terms of branding, the physical, the brick and mortar, you know, presence, that speaks something, vis-a-vis -vis also online presence. In terms of balancing these two acts, how do you go about it as a bank? It's, it's getting the balance right. It's the most important is to get the balance right. Uh, if you take banking services, banking services is not like food that you must physically eat it, you know. Banking services is can you be able to transact. That's very, very important for any client or any customer. Your consideration is can I be able to continue transacting. And the good thing about Kenya, which has really helped us as well, is the M-Pesa platform. So in terms of being able to transact without necessarily going to a bank, has made a big difference. So you can get money out of your, out of your bank account, put it into the wallet and do the transaction that you can do. So what is the reason why do you need to go to a branch? Mm -hmm. So there are some areas that are st we still need to invest in. Mm -hmm. If you take like checks, they still, uh, they still need for checks. So we are investing in check deposit machines to make sure that uh, if there's no physical branch, you can deposit that in check deposit machines. All our ATMs are enabled for cash deposits. So that's, that one, we'll continue investing in that. So I think in terms of, it's looking at it and saying, do we really need the physical retail branch? Yes, for branding purposes. Do you need to be, in, in each and every street, like a coffee shop, very unlikely. Taking a look at the numbers for the year 2020, your profit before tax stood at 7.4 billion shillings. And this was a 39% drop from 12.2 billion shillings in 2019. What informed this particular drop? 2020 was, the, in terms of look at the economic activity, very subdued. Kenya was completely locked down after the end of March probably about, I think it was up to June, July, complete mm -hmm. lockdown. And that had a big impact. If you look at the SMEs, completely shut, food, restaurants, bars, that's a big economy. Mm -hmm. we, part, we are part of that. That impacted us, so big time. Mm -hmm. and we, when you look at FX as well, because of subdued import, then you, people no longer needed foreign currency as much as they did. That has had a big impact on trade as well. So that's, that's one of the big impacts, and that contributed to a 5% drop on our top line. And so obviously that 5% drop in our top line uh, with only a 1% growth in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in the cost base. Mm -hmm. The working profit was, was, not, was, not, was impacted. But then the provisions that we had to take. Mm -hmm. We had to look at the businesses that were impacted and then we had to support our clients through this process. Uh, we, we restructured 21% of our net of our loans, our net loans. That's about 21 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. we, had, we restructured 6,500 clients came to us asking for either a moratorium or <coughs> deferment of their facilities. So we had to take all that into account and provide for it adequately. That's a prudent thing to do. Okay. So that had a big impact. And we'd seen a big increase in our, in our provision level from just under 540 million 2019 mm -hmm. to just about 3.3 billion for full year last year. Mm -hmm. So that had an impact on our, on our bottle of our profitability to mm -hmm. 7.4. But we are pleased with that outcome. I think it's, it's a decent return. It's mm -hmm. a decent outcome in a difficult year to be able to declare such a profit. But most important as well is to be able to look at our capital buffers and see that we are adequately capitalized to actually be able to recommend a dividend. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, the issue of credit, we understand. The credit discussion, we've had it in this country for the longest time. Uh, the country itself actually takes credit. So credit seems to, it is a, an important bit of running any business. Uh, for the restructured uh, loans, for example, you know, 26% of your loan book, that is quite an amount. Uh, have you noted a change uh, between, you know, March, April last year to, to December and now from January 
uh, coming forward. Has there been a change in terms of this business being able to fulfill their obligations? Oh yes, and, 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 and how we, 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 are, we are very pleased because of working very cl closely with our clients. Mm -hmm. By September, by October last year, we could see 91% have come back because most of the people saw it three months or six months. So you either do three months, then this, especially for our personal clients, they ask for six months. Business is the same. They ask for six months or 12 months. And we've seen by the time we, we exited the year, a lot of the clients had come to BAU. So 91% of our clients had come to business as usual. Mm -hmm. So we are pleased with what we have seen. Mm -hmm. So we expect, we expect 2021 to be, if things remain as they are, and we are hopeful that uh, the pandemic does not get out of control mm -hmm. because if obviously the pandemic gets out of control and then the country gets into a lockdown mm -hmm. it'll have an impact on our clients it'll have an impact on, our, on the businesses as a whole mm -hmm. but we hope for the way we saw how we exited 2020 uh, we are a lot more optimistic about how the how our book is going to perform definitely for 2021 yeah, yeah. and and we saw the the central bank of kenya uh, that that grace period yes. uh, which was in collaboration with the banking sector uh, come to an end and they've given the three months for, for every person whose loan was restructured to have cleared. So looking at your books, I know 91%, they have gone back. I mean, they're paying for these three months. Will they be able to, you know, go back and, and you know, get back to paying their loans? Back? I think, let me, let me correct one, one point. It's not to clear the loan. It's mm -hmm. to get into regular yeah, into payment. payment. Yeah, it's uh -huh. to, regu to get into regular payments. And as I said, Already the people we had given, the vast majority, in excess of 90% of the facilities we've already given, were already in business as usual by December. So mm -hmm. we exited in a very strong position. Mm -hmm. So that we'll continue supporting them. There will definitely be hiccups, but we'll treat that as business as usual, not because of, because of the moratorium. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are in that space. Mm -hmm. if, if there's anyone who has, who's, uh, let's say the 9% that, are, that is left, and they are caught up in this period, then it will be treated as business as usual. Mm -hmm. It will be looking at it like, okay, this looks a very different, uh, we'll have to treat it differently. It's no longer a moratorium. Mm -hmm. It will be a different, it's just the way we treat business as usual. Because okay. I think one year, one year is long enough to be able to either recover or we do something else about that. We see what support we can provide and we look at a different way of managing that client. All right. Yeah. So the, there's the issue of, you know, investment, you've noted technology, you know, seems to be very central in terms of banking moving forward. And we've seen in, in this period of banks releasing their, their, their results for the year 2020, mm -hmm. uh, the, the investment, the capital investment in, uh, you know, in, in technology is going up by the day. For Stanchet, how much are you putting into, into this sector and what is the expected outcome? We will, uh, this, is, this is a journey we started two, two, two years back in terms of the investment and uh, this, will, this will continue. It's not something that we can say we've reached because as you know with technology, it keeps on changing, it keeps on getting better. Our focus now, especially if I look at uh, on the corporate side, is how do we digitize a lot of the trade services. Mm -hmm. That's where we are investing. Mm -hmm. If we look at what we call the street to bank platform, that is our main, the core platform for our corporate clients, is to make sure that they, and we just rolled out a, comp a, a new version at the end of last year, till the end of last year, November, December. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we continue improving on that platform based on the feedback that we are giving to clients so that clients can be able to use it, they can be able to download documents, they can be able to submit documents to the bank, they are already doing that. So it's a question of how do we continue improving on that platform for our corporate clients to continue using. Mm -hmm. On the retail side, when you look at, uh, we've fully digitized our wealth services. If you want to invest in any of our wealth products, whether it's on the mutual funds or fixed income, that is all digitized today. Insurance is fully digitized. If you want to buy insurance, whether it's travel or funeral covers or car insurance, it's fully digitized. Mm -hmm. So we've, 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 di we've done a lot of milestones as far as on the, on the wealth space is concerned, as far as retail is concerned. Mm -hmm. I think the next frontier for us is how do we introduce lending? So that if you, are, if you want to get a credit card from us or a personal loan from us, you don't submit any papers, it's fully digital. Mm -hmm. That should be coming in the next month or so. Mm -hmm. A couple of within this within a quarter, so we should be able to fully digitize uh, credit application process, so that you no longer uh, you, you no longer need to give us mountain of documents. You all do it digitally. Definitely, yeah. and uh, uh, that convenience it's becoming central. It, it is. Uh -huh. Yes, because the client wants things very fast. Very fast, and we and we saw the. 
proliferation of you know digital lenders yeah. who the issue of regulation they came in and they tapped into a market that for the longest time was ignored by the banks yeah in in the country and uh, I don't know what do you think now banks approaching this this digital lending space especially for the common monarchy and small businesses how how are you approaching it I think there, there are two things you have to look at it. I mm -hmm. think it's, a, I wouldn't use the word ignored. It's a question of, and if you can see the repercussions, mm -hmm. uh, you can see the repercussions if you look at uh, the listing in the, in the credit reference bureaus, how many of them have been blacklisted. You can see with the legislators coming and saying, we must control this, and the regulators pronounce himself, they would like to regulate. That tells you there's been a problem. Mm -hmm. I think for us, we see it as, it's how do we, there's something we are very particular about, that's responsible lending. We are very particular as standard, as standard charter to make sure that our lending is responsible. You do not want to pile clients or customers with debt just because for whatever gains. So we're very conscious of that. So even as if we go into that space, and it's something we are closely looking at, even mm -hmm. if we go into that space, mm -hmm. our pricing and who we lend to is going to be paramount. Mm -hmm. It's very important for us. It's not a question of making huge returns, but it's a question of making sure that we do responsible lending. Because mm -hmm. if you don't do responsible lending, the outcome is, has been quite clear responsible lending yes that is that is quite interesting because it's crazy that if you take a loan as a person somebody can text your brother or sister exactly exactly and yeah. and and you know now we are in that information age yeah. uh, banks have also fallen victim of you know operating online and the loopholes that are there are uh, issues to do with hacking and security of playing in the digital platform. Is it something that is intentional as a bank to reassure your customers that, you know, somebody cannot hack into uh, and, and also access to their information? Yes. Is it a, a conversation that you have? Oh yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, and it's a very important conversation. I think if you look at the traditional bank, the traditional way we did banking, they, there were frauds as well. It's not that there was no fraudulent activities, whether it's people getting to you, taking mm -hmm. your checkbook and doing what they needed to do or savings account, yes. that was happening. But in the digital age, we are conscious now, there's new ways, there are new levels of fraud. Mm -hmm. And that's another area that is an absolute priority for us. Because mm -hmm. think about it today, most of the banking, a lot of people are doing it through their mobile phones. It's fully digital. When I talk about in excess of 90% for our corporate clients, and over 67% of our retail clients, they are all doing it digitally. So security is paramount, mm -hmm. not only to us, but most important to the clients. I mm -hmm. think the most important thing for people to understand is, I've put my money in Standard Chartered. I don't want to wake up tomorrow, then I find there's nothing. Or I just get an alert, your money. So it's, it's very paramount for us. Mm -hmm. So we keep on making, making investments, and these are areas that we'll keep on investing mm -hmm. to make sure that the security is, is secure. But also, and most important as well, is to educate the clients. Because fraud normally takes place if somebody, there are two parties in this. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, if you get any call, if you, and we say, if you get a call, mm -hmm. somebody purporting to be from Standard Chartered, do not answer. What is the worst can happen if someone calls you and tells you, your money will go if you don't do X, Y, Z? The worst that can happen is the money goes and you come and tell the bank, my money left. But if you start helping them by either giving them a number, or reading what the messages you've been given, mm -hmm. or panicking and then being told do A, B, and C, that's where the problem comes in. Mm -hmm. But we want to work together with our clients. We want to educate them. First of all, we'll never call you, we'll never ask you for your password, we'll never ask you to read anything. So if anyone ever calls you, the first thing you should do is drop that call, don't answer it, because that means it's, it's fraudulent. It's an area we are going to invest in, it's an area we'll continue investing in, because right now, and the future, mm -hmm. technology, is going to be the backbone of banking. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure it's secure and mostly and, f and clients trust it. Because mm -hmm. if they don't trust it, that's what banking is all about. It's about trust. Yes, yes. definitely. You, you've spoken about the future of banking. Uh, looking, looking at the global trends vis-a-vis -vis our national trends, uh, there's been a lot of argument COVID was the great equalizer globally. Yeah, bring everyone to the ground and people starting to rethink now from the best level. And uh, now looking how the banking industry is emerging from this pandemic. Uh, do you think it's, it's having a different approach, identity moving forward? I think it will be. I think if I look at, uh, it's only one year. <laughs> if we look at it, it was March last year that 
complete lockdown in this part of the world. Some other markets probably more than a year. But I think it's what, what is quite clear is you've got, to, you've got to look at the investment that you make. That's important because technology clearly is, it, has, it has helped us. You can imagine if, if there was no investment in banking, the, the kind of investment we had done, mm -hmm. how would clients have transacted? When you told them stay at home, you are on complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. How could you have transacted? If you think about the globally in Europe and America, es no, especially in Europe, where the, the, the lockdown was total. Kenya was not total. I mean, Kenya in Europe, it was total. Mm -hmm. Everybody stayed home, but they still needed to eat. What does that mean? You, if you're going to eat, it means you're buying groceries, it means you're paying for it, you're paying for food. So, but the system, because of technology, they could continue paying for the making the payments and leaving. So that's, that's an important facet of banking going forward. Technology making sure that you are able to provide banking services safely mm -hmm. and conveniently. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. The second one is how do you stand up with your clients, the sectors they are in. If you look at, uh, if you look at Kenya for the last one year, food and bars have been closed. Mm -hmm. That's a whole ecosystem. That's a big, that's a big, that's a big, that's a big, they've been hit quite hard. When you think about tourism, hotels, that's, that's been quite hit hard. So how do we as banks help these companies resuscitate themselves when the right time comes? Tourism will definitely get back. If the vaccine rollout that is happening continues to roll out well in the, in the Americas, Europe, and the rest of the world, the world will start opening. We are optimistic that the second half, hopefully things will start improving. But how do you help all the hotels, restaurants, and these businesses, the small businesses that have really been impacted to really cover. So it's important for banks as well to be well capitalized because that's the only time you're gonna help people recover. You first, you cannot, you need to be well yourself before you treat others. So it's, that's why capital is so important mm -hmm. to make sure you're well capitalized, to be able to support the economies, to the businesses that need to be helped. And also support the ones that, are, that you've already got in our books mm -hmm. and you need to support them to come through. Mm -hmm. That's important as well. So it's so it's a, there's an investment in technology, but also make sure that you've got the right capital buffers to yes. be able to support your clients recover. That's a contribution that I think the banks will have to do. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, new opportunities. We've seen, I mean, for, for just a single virus and uh, everything is down. But we've seen the health sector especially. You've spoken about insurance being very, you know, critical and one of the areas that you're focusing on and growing. Um, in terms of investment in new, you know, frontiers uh, in this recovery phase that we're in, what, what are the, the pinpointing aspects that you think, sectors that you think will be very critical moving forward? You know, I was thinking health is one of them because banks, you know, people have just realized there needs to be that backing yeah. when it comes to health. I think when I look at it, is uh, there's no sector that I would dismiss if mm -hmm. you think about it. But it's how that sector needs to transform. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the biggest difference. If you think about education, let's talk education. It's one of the biggest spenders, in a, the biggest consumers of our taxes as Kenyans, because yeah. one of the biggest budgets, uh, budgetary allocation is at education. And even at personal level, people spend a lot of money on education. But, it's, but it has brought to question the, 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 the way we do the traditional education system. Mm -hmm. I mean, the public schools were complete disadvantaged compl compared to a few private schools, because quite a number of private schools continued offering their education and their content digitally. What does that tell you? There's an opportunity there. How do you digitize education? How do you make sure that the journey we started as a country many years back, maybe we need to bring it back? Mm -hmm. Whether it's iPads or the, the whatever, the digital laptops. education, mm -hmm. laptops, that's important. Because mm -hmm. then it tells you that probably that's an area to invest. So I see an opportunity there. How do you help the schools modernize the way they do the education? Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Health, as you said, it's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. uh, but also health, it's, it's also a question of how do you help customers be able to insure themselves so that, because if something goes wrong and you get sick, the inevitability happens and you're unwell. Have you put aside savings? Very few people can just put aside savings when you to take care of yourself when you get sick. That's mm -hmm. why insurance is very important. And mm -hmm. if you look at some of the policies we rolled out last year, it was all towards to help our clients be able to put aside money, buy insurance, whether it's uh, for rescue services or or for medical services, or in the inevitable, you lose a loved one, you're not completely out of pocket because you've got the funeral cover. Yeah. So it's also, that's another area as well. It's mm -hmm. not, so it's both the investment that needs to be done by the hospitals themselves, 
or health facilities, but also the client saying, okay, but I need, it's like, just like, it would, no one thinks twice about buying a car insurance. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to matters of health, people start debating, de debating <laughs> and sending WhatsApps. Maybe yeah. you need to ask yourself, should I put aside money every month and I've got a cover that protects me? Mm -hmm. The same thing about, then, then the other sector is hotels mm -hmm. and food industry. We also, they also need to relook if this market, some hotels are 100% well, dependent on foreign tourists. That has sent a message. Probably you need to balance your portfolio mm. so that you are taking care of the locals and, and not only Kenyans, East Africans are traveling. Mm. As you've, seen, you've, you, you've seen the bookings around Easter or Christmas time or when schools close, the, either to Mombasa the coast, and other places. Mm. How, that's a new sector that is coming up. Yes. There's a new sector that is coming up of people being fit and healthy. Hiking has become a big thing. Yes. <laughs> people, I was listening to a program and people are starting to say, but we're giving feedback to Kenya Forest Services. You need to digitize the forest so that when we go hiking to the forest, we know where we are. But there's, that tells there's a new sector there. That means there's a, there's, there's, there's a certain population mm -hmm. that has become very health conscious and they want to do a lot more outdoor activities. That is another sector. Wow. So it's all, I think you'll find a new economy that is going to emerge out of this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a modernization of the old. But then you also, some others will completely fall by the wayside. I think every time you go through something like this, some things fall by the wayside. Oh, right. If you look at the heavy investment in transport services, mm -hmm. what does that mean to the material industry? There's a big question mark there. Mm -hmm. So probably, maybe, so there's this, this all that's happening. I mean, people want to travel more in comfort. Probably there's something going to happen there. Mm -hmm. So there's all these things new coming. Some industries fall by the wayside, but others will rise up. Definitely. But most important, yes. any industry that will rise up has to be underpinned by technology. If you're not thinking about technology, how you're going to bring and serve your clients going forward, I think you'll have a challenge. Definitely. Yeah. And you say, you know, a hundred years experience. If you tell me, my friend, have a backing in technology moving forward, I, I have to listen to you because that is enough experience and what we've just gone through the past one year. There's so much to learn. Thank you very much, sir, for, you know, having us as Trading Bell and thank you for your insights. Thank you. Really appreciate time. that. All right, so there you have it. Technology. I know it sounds cliche, we keep saying technology, technology, but my friend, the current is technology, the future is technology. So even if you're running your own personal business, think about it. How can I digitize this as much as I have something physical of it? All right. And that is the discussion regards to banking in the country and how moving forward it will be pegged and pinned on technology. Well, that's it. We went to technique of the markets, shall we?